December 7th, 1941. To know war is to know that there is still madness in this world. Go, go, go! Jesus Christ, help us all, Lord. 22 veterans a day killed themselves. 75 attempt. My name is Cynthia, and I have PTSD. And I've had PTSD since 1967. We're all seeing the same thing, and we're all saying the same thing. You had to raise your hand and say that you, you're having these issues and you want to talk to somebody. You absolutely can get labeled. I don't think we fully understand yet uh, how big the PTSD problem is. The sights, the sounds, the smells will stick with me forever. And while we're treating people, in the background you still hear gunshots, you still hear helicopters flying overhead. And you hear the cries of people that have been hurt. It was the most horrific 72 hours of my life. But when you have somebody dying in front of you, <clears throat> and you have their last words. It's hard. I remember grabbing the last guy and I, he was fully intact, he wasn't bloody, he, just really dirty with dust and stuff. And I remember just kind of picking him up and hugging him and his eyes are just, they're still open and looking me in the eye and I'm like, wow. And I just remember looking at him like, wow, this guy's really young. and. I laid him down and kind of just held his hand and stared into his eyes for a while and remember his name, Corporal Carver, and said a prayer and said a prayer for his family and I just remember closing his eyes for the last time and letting go of his hand and just... An IED blew up right underneath me in the truck and it was, a, it was a big bomb, and it more or less cut the truck in half. I woke up in, uh, in Washington, D.C., in a hospital bed, wired shut. I'd broken my jaw, broken my arms, and my legs were being amputated. Had it not been for the flag jackets that we wore, because I got a hit right in the back with the with shrapnel, Without that flag jack, I'd be dead. I was driving in Kabul City, and these two little kids were riding on a bike right, in, right alongside of us and cut in front of us. And I ended up hitting the two boys. And if I hadn't killed them, the people behind us definitely did. I wanted to stop, and we couldn't stop. We didn't know if it was a setup. We didn't know if it was just an accidental hit, but we had to keep going. And that pretty much destroyed me as a, as a person and as a mom. There is this, these, these hidden injuries uh, of this, uh, this war era, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, a traumatic brain injury. Uh, often you can't, uh, you can't see those in a person because they, they look physically uh, sound and, and, and they look mentally together as well, but they're suffering and they they need treatment. I didn't even wasn't even sure I knew there's anything to that stuff. And in fact, I used to be a little impatient with guys that were talking about PTSD, and and I didn't want to admit that because I didn't want the stigma. And secondly, wasn't convinced I had it. When you see somebody get so emotional, you know, at the mention of being there and everything. There's something that's that's repressed or or hidden in my opinion, you know, that uh, that maybe he has just buried. And a lot of people know how to do that really well. He's one of them. My PTSD feels like 
like you're in a hallway, that you're trapped in this hallway that has no doors, no windows, no rooms that you just can't get out of. It's like you're stuck in, in maybe like a broken world. And uh, I would lash out at people. I would jump out of the car and go pound on other people's car windows if they cut me off. Uh, I drank a lot. I smoked a lot. I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and can't go back to sleep. I wake up twice a night, half or 40 some years, every night. So on May 19th, 2012, I succumbed to PTSD and try to take my own life. Um, I remember I'd gotten home. It was a rough day. I was very emotional. I started drinking. And then I was like, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to be here. This isn't, I don't, I feel completely all alone. Nobody's there to help me, not my command, nobody. And I had pills left over from a surgery, um, strong pain medication, and it was Oxycontin. And I took an overdose. And I knew just that in itself probably wasn't gonna actually kill me. And so I grabbed my combat knife that I had and cut a hole in my arm and slashed part of, tried to slash part of my artery. If somebody had PTSD, I would tell them to talk to someone, anyone, even if it's just a random person that you don't know, to get it off your chest, to get whatever you're feeling off your chest, it helps. Don't put it off, go get the help, because uh, the longer you put it off, the worse it's gonna get. And that's where I hope a lot of veterans get to a point where they know what they have to do and live a normal life. You know, people tell you, don't lose hope. There's light at the end of the tunnel, and I used to never believe that. But now I know there is. I would tell them to smile, because you're still alive, and every day above ground is a good day. 22 veterans a day kill themselves, 75 attempt. When you get that down to 21 and 74. After that's reached, then the goal is 20, 73. One veteran killing himself is one too many. <laughs>